Hey, this is Donnie Smith and welcome to my lesson. This lesson we're going to talk about inspecting a car. So when a car comes in, you need to take a look at it and see what all it needs. You're going to need to write down the things necessary for an estimate. And this uh, video is going to focus on the inspection. What information do you need to write that estimate? Now we're in a shop environment, so there's a lot of background noises going on. Uh, I apologize for that up front, but that's just how it is in those environments. So let's head on over and let's start talking about inspecting a car. We have a Honda that we're going to be looking at. It's an older car, but the same rules will apply regardless of what car, what year model that you're looking at. Hey, this is Donnie Smith. In this video, we're going to talk about inspecting a car to generate an estimate, a repair estimate. Now, the car may have been in an accident, uh, in a collision, or it may be something like this, where I think probably what happened is the door sprung open, hit the fender, and a bit thinner. We're going to go over the, the basic steps of what you need to inspect whenever riding a Tesla. The first thing you need to do is when they bring it in, talk to the person that was driving the car because they have the most information about what happened. You know, they can tell you what direction it was going, how the car is collided, if it was an accident, and also, you know, they can tell you who was sitting in the car and where they, where they was positioned. Now, that's important because wherever someone was sitting, uh, you know, you need to check the, the pretensioners, the seat belts, knee bolsters, you know, any interior components that may have been damaged from the passengers. So that way you know to spend some time checking those areas. Whenever inspecting the car, go ahead and start writing it down, the, the problem areas, the way it's set up in your estimating guide. We have CCC1 that we use to generate estimates. And all those start with the front bumper cover and they end at the back. So they go from front to rear. That way, if you record everything that way, it makes it much easier when you actually generate the estimate. So we're going to start off inspecting this uh, one panel at a time, determine what's wrong and what needs to be done. So we're looking at this bumper cover. There's no damage to the bumper cover, so there's really nothing that need, needs to be done. But we know that we're going to probably going to replace this. We'll talk about that in a minute. So we're going to replace this. We're going to have to paint the whole fender. So we might want to blend into the front bumper cover the hood and that door just to make a, a good match. So we're going to go ahead and figure blending into this front bumper cover. The bumper covers are really hard to, to paint on the car because it builds up under there. So most of the time we're just going to R and I the bumper cover. So I'm going to write down R and I bumper cover and then we're going to paint the bumper or blend the bumper cover. Now we look at the hood, we know we're going to blend in. damage to the hood from this accident, but we are going to blend, so I'm going to write, we don't have to R&I it, R&I stands for remove and install, that's when you're going to take the part off and put the same part back on, just to clear that up. So if I say R&I, let's take the part off and put it back on. Now if we're going to replace this fender, that's called R&R, &R. that's where we remove it and replace it with a new one. So I'm going to write down the blend on this hood. And also you'll notice on this hood that there's an uh, emblem here. If we're going to clear coat what blending is, where we're going to blend the paint to color match it good. So we're going to clear coat the entire hood. So to do a really good job, we're going to need to R and I this emblem. Okay, now looking at the fender, we know we're going to R and R, remove and replace, put a new one on. However, I was checking the keystone. Uh, we may have a hard time finding this fender, so we're not sure if we're going to be able to replace it or not. So how do you determine if you repair or replace something? Well, if it's going to take more hours to repair something than the cost of the fender, then it's going to be uh, you know, wise to go ahead and replace it. This is definitely one that would be a candidate for replacement. It's going to take a lot of hours, especially if you're a shop charging late. It would be a lot cheaper to replace it than to repair it. But in a case like this where availability may be an issue, uh, we may consider repairing. But we haven't heard back from Keystone yet to determine if they can get one for this. But either way, whether you repair it or replace it, this molding will not be on the, the new one. So you have to take it off this one and put it on the new fender. Or if we're repairing this, we're going to have to take it off, do all our body work and painting, and then put it back on. So we're going to have to R&I this side molding. 
We also look, there's a mud flap here. Uh, we'll need to take that off to repair the paint or to take it off and put on a new one. So we need to R and I this mud flap. And if this was a collision right in here, there's a good chance there could be some damage in this uh, tire and wheel area, so you want to inspect that good. And uh, if it's a collision, you may want to consider doing a front end alignment when you're done. This is a, wasn't due to a collision, and I don't see any damage in that area, so we won't have to worry about that. Now we're going to move back to the door. And the door has a little bit of damage right here. Not much. I'm just going to put an hour repair time on that. But the same thing, this molding, we need to take it off in order to do a good paint job to uh, blend it and clear coat it. And we're going to have to R and I this door handle. And to get this door handle off, we're going to have to R and I the trim panel. And we'll go ahead and R and I this belt molding and the mirror. And when you get to the estimating system, you've got to tell you know the estimating system to R and I in order to get the, the time for that. Again, this is a real minor damage. There's no body line misalignments back here. We know that you know it's not a collision, but if it was, you'd want to check your gaps and see how back the damage actually goes. Check your gaps on the other side of the hood, which is fine. This this gap's off, it's just because that fender is pushed in. Okay, now there's another thing you want to do. You want to Go ahead and locate all your prior damage. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. One is that if they, they get the car back and say this happened in the shop, you'll, you'll already have it recorded. And another reason is it may be something that the customer wants to pay for themselves. Uh, you know, if you show them that this is bent, you may ask them if you'd like first to go ahead and replace that before we have your car. Chances are they may do that. So, we're going to go ahead and record all the prior damage. There's a dent right here on this molding. There's a big low area on the roof where it looks like uh, someone may have jumped on it. And we're also going to have to inspect these hinges, have to get the fender off, look that good. Make sure the door is open and shut right. If it was a collision, you'd want to check the seat belts and you know, find out uh, who was in there driving or who's the passengers in the car so you know where to check. Now there's a strap over here that keeps the door, prevents it from opening up all the way. It's missing, so I want to be sure to report that on here. And that could possibly be the reason for that over there, because the door opens too far, it springs it, so we'll need to check that and see if that's a problem over there. And another thing, if this is a removing and replace R&R, you're going to have to jam it, jam the inside of it. So that's going to have more paint tied. If it's just repair, chances are you just have to paint the outside and not the inside. So the paint time will be different. Although this one is not painted right now, but it, it should be. So if we replace it, we'll go ahead and paint this up. Fender jam. Now obviously if this is an actual collision, there would be more involved. This is just a quick overview of what it takes to inspect a car and go through the steps of, uh, of things to look for. And a big thing that you need to consider is, uh, for example, you know, did you R and I the moldings and little things like that that adds up. It may be point twos and point threes. Then over the course of a week, you know, a lot of those add up for, for you, more, more income for the shop and the technicians. Also notice we've got the windshield molding missing here. We want to be sure and put that on. Okay, we've got the, the damage about the vehicle. And we also want to record the vehicle uh, information. We want to look and get the mileage, the license plate, and put the, how much fuel is in the car. And again, the reason you want to put the fuel in the car is just to uh, cover yourself if, if uh, it had a half a tank and they say it was empty when they received the car back. You know, you have record of that. Uh, you know exactly what it had when it came in, and you can show them. And also, whenever you write your estimate, you know, you can show them what has a, this is missing, and this has been ruined. You can show them all that, and may be able to uh, get them to pay for that, because insurance won't cover pre-existing damage, 
but that may be things that they want to go ahead and do while they have the car. And if not, that's fine. But they know those things are, are there and wrong with the car. Many times I think customers aren't trying to, to claim that he did all that just to uh, get you to repair it for free. I think a lot of times they didn't notice. You know, they're going to look at the car a lot harder when they get it back, you know, to make sure it's repaired properly. They may have not have noticed some of the minor things that you pointed out because you're the professional and you can point it out to them. And that way they know that they're there and uh, they won't come back and try to say that it happened while it was in the shop. Anyway, there's a quick overview of uh, how to inspect a car to get it ready to ride an estimate. Thanks for watching this video.